Good morning, everybody. It's indeed a pleasure to be here in front of this August gathering. A few months ago, when my good friend, the Luc Chafneau, asked me to be here at this event, I, of course, you know, whenever he says anything, I always say yes. I don't think I've ever said no to him. But <clears throat> I started wondering what I was going to say. First of all, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And thinking 35 years down the road is very, very difficult. But I read a bit, I thought a bit, and I realized that India and Europe are natural partners. Taking off from Professor Engels, if you look back at history, both Europe and India started with city-states. In India, you had the, the Harappan civilization, which essentially was a conglomeration of city-states, similar to what the Greek civilization was about, it was city-states. Of course, different eras, but the same concept. Then again came the pan-European Roman Empire and the pan-Indian Mauryan Empire, which was possibly the first time that the concept of Europe, without of course realizing it, and also of India without realizing it, that came into being. Then of course, Europe was the model for what became our constitution, equality, brotherhood, and unity. So with this in mind, I think it's very important to understand, and if we look at the two States. This is Europe, the European Union, a conglomeration of many countries. This is India, a conglomeration of many states. In Europe, I don't know how many languages you have. In India, we have 25 languages which are in the constitution, recognized in the constitution. When you see the Indian rupee banknote, there are, it's, there are 25 languages that are written in the thing. So unity and in diversity, yesterday we were talking about, India lives unity in diversity. 25 languages in the constitution, there are actually 200 languages and more than 1,200 dialects with different religions, in fact, one of the key things about India has been that wherever a particular group of people subscribing to a thought process, which is what I call religion is nothing but a thought process, and there was discrimination, they landed up in India. Today in India, we have people from diff different ethnicities, different races, different religions. We have all forms of Christianity, Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Protestant, and every other form of Christianity that you can think of. We have some of the lost tribes of Israel. We have Jews from all over Central Europe and other places. And of course, we have Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, 
Parsis, what have you. We're just a conglomeration of, of completely different ethnicities. But all married to one concept. And that is the concept of India. And the concept of India as it exists today is not a very old phenomenon. We can trace it back to 1923, when one person, and this I think is very important, what the person whom we call Mahatma Gandhi, who talked about the concept of India and fired the nation of diverse people to think about one nation. And despite there being various internal and external threats, today we continue to be India. And that I think also is very similar to the direction that I think Europe has to head towards, which is, of course, it's a concept again, and I think that is very important, that Europe as a union and India as a nation are not physical beings. They are a thought process. They are a being. And that, I think, is very, very important. It's very important that India does not have a culture. You know, although world, external world thinks of India as Indian culture, Indian curry, and whenever someone says Indian curry, I'm very confused because there is no Indian curry. Okay, it's, it's a construct that is put together, I think, more in Europe uh, than in India. So I think that's the, that's the idea. We have retained, everybody has retained their culture, their language, but we are bound together by two languages which are spoken by a large proportion of Indian population. One is Hindi and one is English. And this is the reason why being trilingual is a natural state of mind in India. I myself speak English. I speak Hindi. I also speak Bengali, which is my natural mother tongue. And I think in all three different languages. So it's not a problem. So I think that is an essential thought process, which I said, well, that makes us natural partners. So now, what exists? What exists, unfortunately, is what we call as bilateral cooperation. And since today's discussion is about science and research, I've, I'm kind of putting it to, keeping it to only science and technology. We have science and technology uh, cooperation agreements with 17 uh, European countries. I'd like to mention three of them. France, Germany, and United Kingdom. <clears throat> These three cooperations are at a level where there is complete Agreement. It's not restricted only to science and technology. Although in France, we have the Indo-French Center for Promotion of Advanced Research in India, headed alternately by an Indian and by a Frenchman. Then we have the Indo-German Science and Technology Center. That's headed by an Indian. And in the United Kingdom, we have the UK-India Education Research Initiative, which is, again, alternately headed by an Indian and a British. So now, <clears throat> what is it about these three that I mentioned? It's not just the fact that they have centers. It's just incidental that they have centers. There is not only science and technology cooperation. There's cultural cooperation and uh, one of the things that I was mentioning yesterday is that in these three countries, Alliance Française, 
the Goethe Institute and the Max Müller Bhavan and the United Kingdom, the British Council. There's a whole host of activities that are held by both, all three of them, which is reason why a large proportion of the urban Indian population either speaks French or German. Because one of the th most popular things that Alias Frances does is actually the French language. So I think that's, these are some of the things that I think the European uh, Union can can build on. If we uh, move on, I'd like to look at what happens multilaterally, which is between India and the European Union at present. It's very interesting that my previous speaker talked about space. I've not mentioned space here, but the collaboration between European Union and the Indian space agencies have gone on for almost 40 years. And today, we, when, when India uh, takes off a rocket, a lot of uh, the satellites, European satellites, are there. Conversely, when European rockets go up, many of our satellites are there. So there's, a, there's, there's no boundaries. And I think that is the key. However, if we look at the other aspects, we come back to what yesterday one of the speakers talked about, that the European Union is actually a European common market. And if you look at what exists today, other than in space, it's the Indo-European Business and Technology Center on Clean Technology. It's around business. It is essentially four areas, biotechnology, energy, environment, and transportation, and also addressing climate. There are 39 partner companies in Europe and India. So it's basically all about the business related, the center really looks at business. There's also participation in the Indian Water Development Program by European companies. Then we have another, which is the research, innovation, and business. This is, a, again, the mandate is to convert EU research into sustainable entrepreneurship in India. It's essentially to look at research and then companies formed through research in Europe, and then part partnering in India. This, of course, is an integral part of the strategic research agenda of EU. And, and then, of course, we have the Enterprise Europe Network India. Again, about business. So most of what European Union and India does today, today, does, today, is about business. So as it stands today, I'd probably think in terms of India interacting with the European common market rather than with the European Union. But there's hope. And all that I'm going to be talking about the future is actually all things that are being discussed today. And therefore, they've been discussed. As I said, the strategic research agenda of European Union and India, this exists. Energy security, safety, sustainability, access, and clean technology. And here, this is about research and technology. So therefore, this is very, very different from what exists today. This is, of course, Things that are being discussed haven't come into being as yet. Some of the things that they're going to be talking about is clean coal technology and advanced coal mining. Improved energy efficiency of products and in building sector. Smart power grids integration of renewable energy sources. Energy safety, nuclear and offshore drilling safety. Fusion energy and the Europe and India wind energy network. If you look at it, all of those are areas that are of 
concern in a much larger they cannot be discussed at the bilateral level and therefore it is very important that they be discussed at a much larger level and in almost all of these europe itself is looking at it and india is looking at it therefore i think the fundamental fact going forward is something that a friend of mine told me a long long time ago which i believe defines every partnership and that is that it has to be a win win situation and this is the reason why wherever we work towards wherever we partner with it is to be something that is relevant both to european union and to india in fact i'd go so far as to say that i think of course it's i mean i'm an outsider i shouldn't say anything but i think we should get rid of the word european union i think if we talk about europe that because european union almost in inevitably means that it's just a union of states rather than a concept so i think if we talk about europe and europe and india these are all areas that are of huge relevance to both india and europe sorry there's this the european india collaboration in health this is one of the fundamental things that is being thought about and i think it's very very important because if you look at it health issues are a major uh con a concern in india and very very soon health is going to be a very very large concern of europe not because of what our reasons for concerns of health and your concerns for health will be very different your concerns will be on geriatric health and care ours are on health system delivery health delivery systems as well as what is known as the bottom of the pyramid health care the what is the bottom of the pyramid today in india healthcare is available both in quality and quantity in fact medical tourism has become a very large industry for india but unfortunately all of these are in urban india healthcare cheap and good healthcare available is not available in rural india or in the hills in india and that's something that we need to look at so i think one of the issues that we need to address under health is actually human resources as well as public health so now that's about in health there's a very interesting concept that's being floated right now and that is similar building on actually the indo french center for promotion of advanced research it's based on that it's known as the eu india joint house for science and innovation and the whole idea is that it should be a bottom up scientific program focus on societal challenges and global concerns again issues that transcend national boundaries there is a talk of multilateral networking and mobility joint calls for proposition allow participation of industry as funders and participators integrated r&d projects between research institutions and industry this is the thought how do we put it into actual practice i think a very good program is the horizon 2020 
The Horizon 2020 is possibly the first program, which is a follow-up of the Framework 7 of the European Union, which actually envisages quite a few of this. The mobility is addressed by the Marie Curie Fellowship Program. The networking is done under a joint uh, visits. And industry, as participators, is also part of the Horizon 2020. And what we want to talk about is Horizon 2020 and beyond. The Horizon 2020 is essentially 2014 to 2020. We need to keep that going. We need to keep that going because that's what's going to build our relationship in science and technology in the future. <clears throat> there are these thoughts, again, some programs that have been named, very interesting names. Inno Indigo. Okay? It's actually a connection of the European Research Area Net with India. And it's, interestingly enough, the Inno Indigo started in 2009. And we, I didn't know, certainly didn't know about it before I started thinking about this talk. That between 2009 and 13, 35 projects were funded for 10 million euro. There's a whole lot of interest in the Indo-UN. We need to build on that. Euclid, that's another program that's been thought about, which is on EU-India R&D cooperation in network monitoring and control systems. Research Partnership in Information and Communication Technology. We both have leadership in these areas. In fact, the entire 4G standards actually developed from discussions in India. This probably is not known. Uh, so therefore, where? ICT for healthcare. Energy. I told you about the bottom of the pyramid. So I think ICT for healthcare is a very, very important aspect of the bottom of the pyramid. Energy. Education. Again, to provide education across 1.6 billion people is going to be a challenge. Governance. Games. Games. In fact, today we have a program in India where we use games to teach school children. Agriculture and manufacturing, both distributed and additive manufacturing. These are areas where this is, this is where the world is moving to. And if we move together, we use the knowledge base that exists in both parts. If we move together, you provide a huge counterpoint even in the political world, because ultimately it is where it's all about do we have the political will? Possibilities are endless, but do we have the political will? That's the most important thought process. The science and technology researchers can theorize till the cows come home. It's ultimately the political will to ensure that India and EU become even greater partners than they are today. Thank you very much.